Hello and welcome to the Monday, February 5th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the questions that often comes up uh, with our honeypot is if it's possible to gain more insight into attacks hitting your individual honeypot. Now, some of this can be done by just uh, looking at your account in the Shield.org or the Internet Storm Center. However, the information there is, of course, limited to information that you submitted uh, to us, and uh, that's just sort of the basics of uh, the attacks. On the other hand, the logs on the honeypot itself, uh, while they have a lot more details, they're often not that sort of easy accessible in particular to people new uh, to uh, this field. So Guy took uh, it upon himself and did a real great job in figuring out how to build a little bit of a dashboard that shows what's going on in your honeypot. Now, this just got a lot easier now, thanks uh, to uh, Guy, who built a dashboard for the Honeypot using the Elk Stack, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Great Kibana dashboard here. What I like in particular is the TTY logs, which uh, is uh, basically all the commands that attackers attempted to execute in the cowrie part of the Honeypot. This particular setup is made available as a Docker container. It can run on some of the better equipped Raspberry Pis, but definitely if you're running your honeypot in a virtual machine or such, where you have a little bit more resources, it shouldn't be all that difficult to run this dashboard. Any feedback, as always, is very much appreciated. Any uh, data items or such that uh, Guy may want to add or so to this setup or uh, any bugs that you're running into, uh, please uh, let us uh, know. The undergraduate interns uh, that we have from sans.edu also help sort of debug and uh, develop uh, this uh, particular dashboard. Remote access that's not well protected, like, for example, RDP, tends to be one of the big entry points of ransomware actors into corporate networks. We often see, for example, RDP access being offered on various dark websites. So... Organizations often look for alternatives uh, to RDP, and uh, one of the alternatives they may come across is AnyDesk. But on Friday, AnyDesk announced that it suffered a breach that uh, compromised some of their production systems. They are not really very clear here as to how deep uh, this uh, compromise goes, uh, what exact systems, what data was compromised. They do, however, state that there is no evidence that any end-user devices have been affected. They do, on the other hand, also state that uh, they did revoke all security-related uh, certificates and replace them where necessary. Not sure if that indicates that some of these certificates may have been compromised. Also, code signing certificates were replaced uh, for their binaries. Having released that news on Friday may have uh, caused some of their users to miss the news, even though over the weekend I've seen it being sort of widely reported uh, by many websites. So shouldn't be that difficult for you uh, to figure out that something happened here with any desk. They also require that users are changing passwords with the my.anydesk.com website. That's the web portal for AnyDesk. I would certainly be double checking any AnyDesk deployments that you have. Just make sure that uh, everything looks sound, but uh, with the lack of any more details as to what the compromise exactly entailed and what happened here, it's a little bit hard uh, to really give solid advice because, well, uh, who knows really what went on there. And Snick published a blog post with uh, details regarding uh, four different uh, Docker vulnerabilities that they collectively call leaky vessels. Uh, these vulnerabilities do allow a breakout out of the container. 
This is always a problem in particular if you may be loading a container from some less than reputable sources. So for example, you are downloading some container from Docker Hub to start building your own container with and it may include exploit code that will then end up executing codes code on the host running the container. So that uh, could potentially be a huge problem in order to fix this you have to basically update your docker build chain so your tool chain that you're using to create your docker containers watch out for relevant updates from vendors for these vulnerabilities well this is it for today thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye